Hey everyone, so today's tutorial is going to be this look using High Street Drugstore Makeup Brands. So to start with, I'm going to use L'Oreal Studio Secrets Primer. This gives a matte finish with a really silky texture and it's great at disguising the appearance of pores and wrinkles. I'm applying this primer down the central section of the face. Next I'm taking L'Oreal Infallible Matte Foundation. When you turn it over you can see the coverage it gives which is medium and the finish is matte. I'm using my Real Techniques buffing brush to work that into the skin. This foundation claims to be waterproof, steam proof, to last 24 hours and not be cakey. Now I didn't leave it on for 24 hours, I actually took it off after the tutorial because I didn't like it on my skin. For me it was just too mattifying, if you really like that matte look then you'll probably love this foundation. And although it says it didn't look cakey, I have got a couple of dry patches that it clung to. I'm then going in with the L'Oreal Infallible Sculpt. As you can see it's got a contour colour and a highlight shade. So the formula is cream to powder, so it goes on like a cream and then sets like a powder. The idea of this formula is that you don't have to set it with a powder on top. With other cream contour products you'll know it leaves that tacky feeling on your skin. Ordinarily you'd have to go over it with a powder if you want it to last and stay in place. This formula is obviously going to set to a powder so you don't get that tacky feeling. Now you can clearly see this is very warm on my skin, it's quite orangey. And initially I thought this is going to be a disaster. But once it's blended in it's not too bad. I prefer to go for something more ashy that looks more like a shadow than something that's warm. So it claims to have smart pigments in that matches the skin's colour. And as I say when I blend it out it's not actually too bad. It's all very lightweight as well. You get a lot of cream contour products that are very thick. This isn't. It goes on quite intense but when you blend it out as I said it's quite light coverage and it just melts into the skin. I'm going in with the highlight shade, again it is a light coverage so it kind of went a bit wishy-washy on the skin, I'm not really convinced it did much for me, but if you're slightly lighter toned or a darker tone it might work better for you, just on me I felt like it didn't do much. Next I'm taking the Soap and Glory Kick-Ass Concealer Duo, it comes with two colours, this is the medium so it's one that's slightly lighter and one that's slightly darker. And it also comes with a powder to set the concealer and you've seen me use this a number of times in previous tutorials for the price of it i think it's brilliant once you've concealed any areas that you feel need a bit of extra coverage you can just use a brush to set the under eye using the powder that comes in the compact using another soap and glory product this is the archery brow putty dip and brush i received this in the post the other day and it is the shade blonde which is too light for me but i wanted to use it just to show you guys it's actually quite a cool product not as precise as using a pencil but if you just want to fill in the sparse areas then this is great it's another smudge proof waterproof sweat proof product so it's going to stay in place all day you've got the brush on one end and the putty on the other and you just dip the brush into the putty and then work that through the brows if you follow me on Instagram you'll know last week I went to a Max Factor mascara launch and we got a goodie bag and this palette was in the goodie bag. It's the Masterpiece Nudes palette and this one is in 01 Cappuccino Nudes. And to start with I'm using this medium matte brown eyeshadow and I'm working that through the crease on a fluffy blending brush. These have got a lovely velvety finish to them so they're really easy to work with and as you can see they blend into the skin beautifully. As usual I'm building this colour so I'm layering it two or three times to build up the opacity and it's going to work as our transition shade. Next I'm going in with a slightly darker matte finish brown and using the tapered crease brush I'm elevating the handle so that the brush head is facing downwards slightly and I'm pushing the tip of that into the socket of the eye. And then I'm just working the brush backwards and forwards and this is going to allow the colour to be applied into the crease and upwards and not onto the mobile eyelid. And just so you know this is the E32 brush by Blank Canvas Cosmetics. Going back in with my round top blending brush I'm going to blend all the seams of the eyeshadow to make sure everything is nice and seamless. The next colour I'm using is this sparkly cappuccino shade and on my flat shader brush I'm applying that to the outer half of the mobile eyelid so up to the crease and again you want to layer this a couple of times. Next I'm taking this sort of minky pink shimmery shade and I'm applying that to the mobile eyelid from the inner corner across to meet the cappuccino shade. Then I'm going in with this vanilla colour and this has got a subtle shimmer to it and on a pencil brush I'm applying that to the inner corner of the eye. This is going to brighten that area and make your eyes look much more awake. Next I'm going in with this shimmery chocolate colour. On a pencil brush I'm pulling that colour from the outer corner of the eye downwards along the lash line tapering off at the centre of the eyelid. 
Then going back in with the flat shader brush and what's left on the bristles, I'm blending the cappuccino colour into that chocolatey shade. Then I'm going back in with my pencil brush and reapplying the colour. Next I'm going in with this deep chocolatey brown shade which is a matte finish and I'm applying that on the pencil brush to the very outer corner of the eye. So I'm tracing the shape that I've already applied with the chocolatey shade. Then using the very tip of the brush I'm applying a small amount of that colour into the crease area but again it's very very small. Then I'm using my blending brush to soften that. I'm taking that same colour on a pencil brush underneath the lower lash line. I'm taking that two thirds of the way across and I'm also making sure to connect the outer corner to the top lid. And then going back in with my round top blending brush I'm going to soften everything. Next I'm taking this brown eyeliner pencil by MUA Cosmetics which only costs a pound and I'm applying that to the waterline of the eye. I'm also going to use that to tight line. Another product that I got in my Max Factor goodie bag was this Masterpiece Precision Liquid Liner. And I'm starting in the middle of the lash line, pulling the colour backwards and thickening that as we get to the outer corner. It's got like a rounded top to it, so you can draw the lines quite precisely. It would just be a little bit harder to make a sharp wing with it. So I'm stopping at the outer edge with a small triangle. To make that less intense, I'm going back over this with my pencil brush using what's left of that brown. The mascara I'm using is the Max Factor Voluptuous False Lash Effect Mascara. This was the mascara that was at the launch. It's got a helix shaped wand with wide fins for really loading the product at the base of the lashes. And it's also got a boost tip with little bristles on the front so you can really get to the inner corner of those lashes. I went into Superdrug and picked up these Girls With Attitude Double Take False Lashes from the English Rose Collection. They've got a nice amount of drama to them, they haven't got a really thick band so they're quite comfortable to wear and they're not too long. As it's the winter I need a bit of warmth to the skin so I'm using the Bourjois Bronzing Primer. This has that silky texture that really smooths out the skin like the L'Oreal Studio Secrets Primer. So you can use this under your foundation or over your foundation and again if you're oily it's good because it gives that mattifying finish. I'm applying this to the areas that the sun would hit, so the top of the forehead, across my cheekbones. I did apply a small amount down my nose and a little bit on my chin. For blush, I'm actually going to use a NYX lip butter, and I'm going to use that on my fingers just to press that onto the cheeks. You can use any blush that you like. I'm just using this one because it blends in really nicely and it adds a pop of colour. Plus, I've misplaced my bourgeois blush. On my lips, I'm using another NYX lip butter, and this one is in snow caps. That's a nice nude. I'm not sure if you can still get NYX in next, but that's where I got mine. And that completes my High Street Drugstore makeup look. Hey everyone, so I hope you enjoyed my Drugstore High Street makeup tutorial. As there's such a variety of different colours along the nude spectrum in here, with both matte and shimmer finishes, you can do a whole array of different eye looks with this palette. I've automatically gone for one that suits my eye shape, but you can do one that suits yours. These eyeshadows are super pigmented and I'm really, really impressed with them. And I think it's about £14.99 for the palette. So it's not really cheap, but it's not dear either. And you definitely get your money's worth. So thank you for watching my tutorial. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you don't know already, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and they're all at Show Me Makeup. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button. If you're watching it on mobile, if you turn your phone around like that, you'll see the subscribe button is below. If you've missed my previous tutorials, you can click on these now and it will take you to those. All the products I've used will be listed and linked in the description bar. I usually try and link for both UK and US because usually one of those websites will ship worldwide. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.